have you been told that your tubes are blocked and that is the reason why you cannot conceive then this video is for you hello everyone my name is dr sakshi bansal mbbs ms dnb obs and gynae with super specialization in ivf and infertility uh, in my past experience of 15 years we have helped many patients conceive through ivf iui and through natural methods so today we will talk about fallopian tube blockage and its role in infertility so first we have to understand that what is a fallopian tube what are fallopian tubes and how do they function so fallopian tubes are two delicate tube like structures which are present on either side of the uterus so this is the uterus this is the lower portion of vagina where the intercourse happens these are the two tubes one tube and the other tube and these are the two ovaries so the tubes open on two ends the first end is inside the uterus and the second end it opens outside in the peritoneal cavity near the ovary so what happens whenever the egg is released it is captured by the fimbriae of the fallopian tube and the egg goes inside the fallopian tube this also happens due to the peristaltic movements of the tube which helps in moving the egg from this end to inside at this point of time the sperms travel from the vagina to the uterus and then inside the fallopian tube and then they fertilize the sperms fertilize the egg inside the fallopian tube so the embryo formation the baby formation happens inside the fallopian tube now this embryo moves inside the uterus again by the peristaltic movements of the fallopian tube and the embryo then gets implanted here inside the uterus this is the normal function of the fallopian tube so what happens when the fallopian tubes get blocked when the fallopian tubes get blocked there is no way that the sperm can meet the egg and hence the fertilization and the baby formation cannot happen so in, the, in most cases of fallopian tube block it is almost impossible to conceive naturally so the next question is how do the tubes get blocked the most common reason of fallopian tube blockage is infection the most common reasons the most common organisms of infection are tuberculosis and chlamydia infection now what happens is the this infection it damages the fimbria and the cilia inside the fallopian tube and cause fallopian tube blockage and it hampers the normal function of the fallopian tube also there is adhesion formation around the fallopian tube in this area by which by, because of which the fallopian tubes get kinked and distorted so the normal tube ovarian relationship is disturbed which uh, makes it difficult to conceive also sometimes because of the tubal block what happens is there is fluid accumulation and pus formation inside the fallopian tube which is also called as hydrosalpings or pyosalpings and this will also uh, make it impossible to conceive so uh, there is another important reason also of fallopian tube block which is iatrogenic that means sometimes the people go for family planning operation that is tubectomy after their family gets completed in that the tube is cut from between and so that the patient cannot conceive again but later on when they change their mind uh, they will find it impossible to conceive because the fallopian tubes of both side are cut that is called as tubectomy that may also be the reason of fallopian tube blockage so how to open the tubes uh, there is only so these tubes can only be opened surgically the most common method is by laparoscopy in which uh, we introduce ports inside the uh, abdomen and uh, we try to remove the adhesions from around the fallopian tubes so that they get opened and also we can try the cannula cannulation of fallopian tube from inside the uterus and create a path so that the fallopian tubes open up but it is not necessary that they may be uh, uh, able to function normally after that because mostly after any sort of infection the damage to the tube is mostly permanent in 90% of the cases it is permanent even after you treat the infection the damage it has caused is mostly uh, not reversible so what happens that when even after laparoscopy the fallopian tubes cannot be opened in those cases IVF or ICSI is the only option by which these patients can conceive. In IVF, the egg and sperm fertilization, which generally happens inside the fallopian tube, is made done outside in the lab, and uh, one egg is fertilized by one sperm, and by that method, the embryos are formed, and those embryos are transferred directly inside the uterus, by which the patient can 
conceive also in tubectomy operations the uh, in patients in which tubectomy have been done the restorative surgery can be done by making the two ends of the fallopian tube join to each other after which patency can be maintained this can also be done and if the patency cannot be restored then ivf or icsi is the only option so thank you for listening and hope this video for is was useful to you thank you